As some of you may have noticed yesterday, I did make a passing reference to NVIDIA's GeForce Now service while I was talking about Google Stadia. Now, the primary thing that separates these two services is not necessarily how many games one has versus the other, but rather their distribution and their licensing models for each one. The distribution model for Google Stadia is such that you will pay the toll necessary to play maybe Dragon Ball Xenoverse or Guilt or Grid or whatever other game it is you decide to play. And you'll be able to play said game on Google supported devices, assuming A, your account's in good standing, and B, you didn't uh, reverse engineer or copy the game or something. I don't know. You followed the terms of the license agreement. And the one with NVIDIA is such that you will pay for the game on Steam and you'll be able to play that one, if it's a supported game in the library, on one of NVIDIA's supported devices. Same as you would on Stadia. Almost. But this is where things start to get murky. The licensing agreements. When you pay for maybe Dragon Ball Xenoverse or Grid or whatever, you, that licensing agreement that you enter into will be between you, Google Stadia, and the publisher of said game. However, when you try to open up a game for the first time on GeForce Now, even if the first time you've opened the game completely is on NVIDIA service, the licensing agreement you open up is going to be between you, the publisher of whatever game it is you're playing, and the marketplace you originally bought it from, whether it's Steam or the Epic Game Store or maybe GOG. I, I don't know where you buy your games, but NVIDIA is nowhere in that list. Even if, like I said, NVIDIA was the first place you opened up the game. Period. And that is where things are starting to get murky, and that is the primary working theory when it comes to why many of these publishers are pulling their games from the service entirely. So far, the paid version has only been out for a little over a month. But many of these publishers, including Activision and Bethesda, are wondering why they aren't getting their share. And that is where things start to get a little bit more murky for situations like this. And they are, in fact, trying to follow their licensing agreement as closely as possible simply because of the situation. In fact, one <clears throat> during a conversation that The Verge had with Raphael von Lirup, the game director and writer of The Long Dark, which was published by Hinterland Studio, pulled his game over the weekend, displeased that it was included in the paid version of GeForce Now without his explicit consent. So he, he pulled it completely because they didn't ask his permission to put it in the paid version rather than, you know, give him at least a tiny bit of that $5 that everybody's spending. Now, as far as managing a, a price structure for that kind of game, is it's a little tenuous at times, but making sure these publishers are happy when it comes to launching a new platform, a new way, a new manner of distribution for these games is, well, to put it simply, it is the crux of the issue. Keeping publishers and customers happy is going to be the biggest necessity when it comes to NVIDIA succeeding in this new and growing marketplace. If, they, if that means they need to raise the price slightly to maybe 6 or $7 in order to support their servers that they've been using over the past month to be able to host a lot of these games, pay off the publishers, and maintain the library that the customer base, you and me, have already come to enjoy, then that's something that they will have to take a real hard look at. 
The primary thing though is that they will have to keep it underneath the $10 price gauge that Stadia has set. By doing this, they are able to maintain a foothold and be the streaming service that, well, that comes out on top at, in the end. The one that defines what the market needs to be. Because right now, both Stadia, GeForce Now, and Shadow are all working hard to try to be the best. But none of them can really come out on top for one reason or another. But each of those reasons is that they keep undercutting themselves. They are shooting either the customers, themselves, or the publishers in the foot. And by not maintaining that balance, they are killing themselves as well as the game streaming industry itself. Thankfully, Project X Cloud and PlayStation Now are still trying to grow and trying to maintain themselves so that they can come out on top when this whole debacle comes out and the, and the smoke clears a little. Personally, I, I'm just hoping that one of them comes out on top and we can see a much better standard when it comes to game streaming over the long term.